So hello, my name is Karen. Uh, I'm a Paralympian swimmer. I have five-year-old twins, which has a bit of a difference on competitive swimming. I also have two and a half year old twins. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> They're all boys. <laughs> My story divides to two equal parts. There's the part of the sports and the part of the disability. And for you to understand the story, you have to understand the two very separate ends. And though you've seen a part of my sports, I'd like to talk about disability for a sec. Because disability, apart from the sight, the, the sight of it, apart from my sitting in a wheelchair or not feeling my legs or whatever, is at the finer points in life. And I think the best way of understanding it as if I shared a story with you. I was in the hospital for almost three years after I had back operations. And what kept me sane throughout that time was the thought of going back to my mom's house, waking up whenever I want to, sitting in the living room, drinking a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper, which is not that big of a fantasy. And when I, when I came home, the first thing I, want, I went to do was fulfilling that fantasy. But I was walking with crutches, and coffee and crutches are, well, not the best of friends. And I was taking my coffee to the living room table, and it all spilled on my hand, and I was burnt, and it took me almost two years to understand that if I only fill my cup three quarters high, I can walk with my cup of coffee by myself, not needing any help. Because disability is at the finer points in life. And the way I try to live my life, the way I try to raise my children, could I, see the, could I show the picture of my boys? Because that's my tomorrow. I have, I told you, four boys, and the way I try to teach them is not being afraid of failure. Because failure is, a, is the, the biggest step towards success. If you're not afraid of failing, you will succeed. It took me long, long years to realize that. When I left the hospital, I started swimming. Um, and two days after I started swimming, I went to my coach and I told him, well, you know, the, the, the Sydney 2000 was more than four years forward. And I told him, I'd like a gold medal at the Paralympic Games, which is very logical. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say anything, he wouldn't reply. He had the tiniest smile, but he didn't say anything. And we started working. And I was training very hard for the European Championships in Spain. And I didn't swim as well as I should have at that European Championship. And even though I didn't swim as well as I should have, I came back home at the fourth place, and I, all, I, I had a medal. And I came back knowing that if I worked harder, if I trained harder, if I aimed higher, I will get my medals. And we were working very hard for the next few years. The next year was the World Championships in New Zealand, and I was tearing my butt off for it. And the year, the, the next year was the European Championships in uh, in Germany and I came back home from that European Championships having th won three gold medals and three world records at the European Championships at, in Germany thank you but the, 
the finer point there was the pride. It's a big word, but pride for knowing that Hatikva was played in Germany three times in the disabled European Championships because of me. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And we came back home and we started training our last year of training towards the Sydney 2000 Games. Our head of our, uh, our manager came up to the media and he said that I was the Israeli hope for a medal for T Sydney 2000, which is very relaxing. Because my expectations of myself aren't enough, and every, everyone who swims with me and my family and everyone else aside, I have the entire aspirations of the Israeli state on my broken back. It's not too much. It is. It is too much. I was training twice a day in the water and three times a week in the gym. Fifteen sessions a week. Eighty kilometers of swim in the water per week. That's a lot. And six months before the games, I tore the ligaments in my right shoulder, which meant an end for my aspirations for the Sydney 2000 Games. But I decided that's not an, it's not an end, it's a beginning, because as I said, failure is only a, a step towards success. Two months later was the Israeli Championships. And because I had no expectations on, of me, I was very relaxed before the Israeli Championships, and I swam the best result I ever did at the 103 at that Israeli Championships. And it was a very important lesson for me to understand. If I'm relaxed, I swim better. It's important to understand it before you go to the <laughs> Olympic Games than after. And I got, and we got to the Olympic Games. And I was very nervous at the Olympic Games. You have to understand that every athlete coming to, Olymp to the Olympic Games is very nervous because you have a lot of media attention and you have a lot of stress building up for four to five years towards the minute touch of a wall. A millisecond that will color, black or white, the four years before it and the four years coming. So there's a lot of stress building up towards Paralympic Games. But for me, as a disabled athlete, somewhere along the way, I don't know where, but somewhere along the way, I got myself to a point of, to a, I, I stuck myself in the thought of, if I won, at the Paralympic Games, I could go on living with my disability. So the way I felt was that if I won at the Paralympic Games, I could go on living. And that's a bit too much to put on a, on a minute and sum that I'm in the water. And two days before the Games, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I, I honestly felt I was going to die. And I called home and I said I want to go back home. I couldn't take it anymore. And I was told, OK, can you get the tickets? We'll wait for you, arms open wide. And I felt like someone popped my balloon, because if I don't have to be there, there are other options for me. If there are other options, I can be there. It's OK. And the next day, I was aiming for success again. And I swam at the first events, and I swam well. I went to the finals on lane five. The, the lanes are that on lane four comes the first uh, runner-up, and then five, three, six, two, seven, one, eight. So it's an arrowhead at the uh, finals. And I went back on lane five, but it didn't really matter. I was 
going for gold. And I did. I won the gold at, uh, on the evening. And the next day we had, no, it's okay, thank you. <laughs> it's okay. The next day was the 100 back that you saw earlier. Again, that, was, that ended with the gold medal and a world record. And I had two gold medals, two world records, and what I had left for the next event was knowing that anything that I did that is any less than gold medal and world record, it's, it's like I didn't do anything by now. So I was very stressed because 50 meters is only one lane, one pool lane. I was nervous. And I swam at the preliminaries. I improved the world record by a tenth of a second, which is a lot. But it's a rookie's mistake, because if you, if you improve the world record in the mornings at the preliminaries, the expectations of you become much higher. And I left the pool very nervous, and someone from the media comes to me and he says, you improved the world record in the morning. What are you going to do this evening? If I could bite him, I would. I went back to the village and I started crying because I was nervous as hell. And I went back to, and we came back to the, to the pool deck and I was preparing myself. And there was, the crowd was filled with Israeli people and people from the Jewish community the Jewish community because there was a rumor that, that there is an Israeli swimmer who wins medals. They were all cheering and roaring with flags and signs and I couldn't see anything. Too nervous to see. And we went to the last call room and I was ready. I was trying to prepare myself for the final 50 meters. And the, the jump off for the 50 meters from the other side of the pool because it's only one lane and I had 50 meters more to think what I was going to do and I was thinking for myself, that's the last event. I don't keep anything for later. As far as I'm concerned, I can touch the wall and die. And I went in the water holding the, the jumper could I, could I show, please, the next film? I want to show you this event. That's the very, very nervous me. The red dot now is 10 more, me 10 more meters, that's 5 more meters. And I couldn't take it anymore. I remember touching the wall, thinking it's done, I can try now. Three gold medals, three world records, it's quite a good Paralympic Games. Thank you. Thank you. I participated in Athens 2004. I won four medals. I participated in Beijing 2008. I missed the medal by a tenth of a second. I went there with my nursing twins, but I missed the medal by a tenth of a second. I was aiming to go to London, but I am going to miss it because of an injury. Rio, here I come. I'd like only one more s sentence to f finish it up. I would like to tell you, please do not be afraid of failing. It is the best, the, the one and only step you have to take in order to succeed. Take an example from me. I'm Karen, I'm paralyzed, I have four kids. I'm the best in the world at what I do. 
There aren't that many people who can say that for themselves. Thank you.